Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from Softune. This is the next episode from my Dev Concept series. In this lesson, I will briefly explain and demonstrate the concepts of component-based development and event-driven programming. In component-based programming, components are self-contained pieces of functionality which are inserted as part of larger software application. Component-based software engineering is based on the composition of such reusable components. Event-driven programming plays an important role in software components, which are typically event sources, which emit events. For example, a button component may emit a button-clicked event, which is handled by the button owner. Component events are intended to be consumed by the component owner, typically the app we are building. The event handling code for processing an event coming from a component is called event handler. In many applications, a generic central component or framework can even take full control of the app execution and call the main program from time to time through events. This is called inversion of control, IOC. Let's review in greater detail the concepts of components, events, event sources, event handlers, and the inversion of control principle. Component-based software development is a programming paradigm in which apps are built by composing reusable components, which typically come from software packages or component libraries. Let's explain this concept in detail. Components-based software development is software development approach, a programming paradigm based on the composition of reusable components. Instead of building the application or system from scratch, developers take ready-to-use components and plug them into their software. The components are building blocks, which come from component libraries and software packages, which can be open source, royalty-free or commercial. Components are self-contained pieces of functionality ready to be inserted as part of larger software application. For example, a PDF generator component can be used to create PDF reports, insert formatted text, images, tables, and other elements in them, and create then uh, a PDF file which can be displayed in the web browser or printed on a paper. The internal details about the PDF document format and how it works are hidden in the component. Developers do not need to care about these technical details. They just use the component. Another example of software component is an email sender, which can send emails holding formatted text and attachments. The email components know how to connect to the specified email server using the SMTP protocol and how to compose email messages using the MIME standard. This functionality is encapsulated internally inside the component and developers do not have to go into graded technical details. Another example of software component is a date picker UI control used in web front-end applications. The dead picker visual component is a drop-down box which shows the calendar and user can select specific day. If you open a website to book online airline tickets, you will see such a date picker component. User interface components are also known as UI controls, visual components or widgets. Software components can be visual such as the date picker and non-visuals such as the PDF generator. Visual components are called UI controls. Software components are distributed in component libraries. Component libraries are software components bundled as redistributable software packages. They can be downloaded from a software component repository such as npm, nuget or pyp or can be purchased from software component vendors such as Telerik uh, and others, or can be publicly available open source projects such, such as Apache Commons Crypto and jQuery UI. Example of open source UI control library is the jQuery UI project, uh, which uh, jQuery UI provides front-end user interface 
components, widgets, effects, and interactions for JavaScript developers. This is an example of software component without any technical details. This is what the end user see at the screen. This is how a date picker UI control can look like. Uh, when you click at the date field, uh, the calendar appears to help you selecting a date. This is the date picker component from jQuery UI control library. This web demonstration illustrates how to use software components. It demonstrates the date picker widget uh, from the jQuery UI control library. We'll open the web example at RepoWid and we we'll wait for it to load. It needs some time. Uh, we run the example uh, and we see a date selection box on the right and we can choose a date from the calendar. Event-driven programming is a programming paradigm in which the flow of the program is determined by events such as mouse clicks, key presses, button clicks and many others. This is how it works. Event sources, typically software components, emit events and event handlers, typically in the app we built or in another component, process these events. In this section, I will explain how this works in more detail. Event-driven programming is a programming paradigm in which the flow of the program is determined by events, such as mouse clicks, key presses, button clicks, and many others. Typically, a software framework drives the application and listens for events in an event loop. And when an event occurs, the framework calls the code to handle it. Developers write the code for handling the events, functions or method. Uh, and examples of event-driven software frameworks are the user interface UI system in the web browsers, where the HTML5 standard describes the components in their events. Another example is the UI system in Android, which defines a set of UI components with events. Uh, event source or event emitter is a software component that produces events. For example, an internal component in the software framework may track the mouse and when the mouse is clicked, it may ev emit an event. Typical example of event source is the button component which defines the on-click event. Developers can write their own components such as an email sender and emit events in certain situations. For example, when a successful connection to the mail server is established or when the email uh, was rejected by the server for some reason. Event handler or event consumer is a piece of code or callback function written by developers to handle or process an event. A simple example is to show a message when a button is clicked. In this example, the button is an event handler. The button is an event emitter it has on-click event, which can be handled by developers. To handle the event, developers write an event handling function and assign it for the on-click event. When the button is clicked, the framework emits the on-click event. The event handling function handles the on-click event and shows a message. The inversion of control IOC principle is a programming paradigm where the control flow is inverted. 
This is how it works. Instead of your program to call external components for certain tasks, it's the opposite. A framework takes full control and calls your program from time to time for certain tasks. The program control flow is typically controlled by a framework, a function, or an algorithm which call functions from your code, and this way your main program serves as a component injected into the framework. In this section, I will explain in more details how IOC works, and I'll give you real-world examples. The inversion of control IOC principle is a program control flow paradigm where a function or component or framework does the processing and calls pieces of your code for certain tasks. The control is inverted. Uh, instead of your program to keep control and invoke external functions and libraries, the framework takes control and invokes pieces of your code functions from your program. This concept is called inversion of control and is very often used with software frameworks. For example, most user interface UI frameworks work under the inversion of control principle. The UI frameworks typically keep the control and uh, the execution of your entire application and invoke your code to handle events uh, to which your code is subscribed. Look at the pictures at the screen to get better understanding of the difference between the traditional program flow and the inversion of control program flow. Let's look at two examples of inversion of control behavior to understand it better. The first example is a parser, which processes doc a document and calls events when it finds certain tokens uh, for example, an XML parser, which takes an input XML document and it calls event handler uh, from your code when a new tag is found in the XML document. This is how event-driven XML parsers work, such as SACS. SACS stands for Simple API for XML and is widely used industry standard for XML processing. Another example is a GUA app, a visual app with a graphical user interface, GUA. The UI framework drives the app and keeps control over its execution. The framework manages the UI, draws the UI controls, listens for interactions, and emits events, events after each interaction. When the text is changed in a text box, or a button is clicked, or the focus is moved from one text field to another, the UI framework emits event after each interaction. Developers handle these events by providing event handler functions and response to user interactions. Most user interface frameworks and libraries are event-driven and use the inversion of control principle. That's why event-driven programming and inversion of control are so important. If you deal with front-end and user interfaces, you will use inversion of control frameworks and event-driven driven programming. We shall learn how to create front-end applications in the professional modules and courses at SoftUnit. This classical calculator app 
is a good example of component-based app which relies on the inversion of control, IOC, and the event-driven programming concept. The UI framework draws the user interface of the app and infinitely checks for user input in a loop. The infinite loop in the UI framework, uh, which tracks the user interface, input and other events is called event loop. Clicking on a button from the calculator app emits an event on click. This event is handled by the calculator's engine and its program logic. And its program logic decides what to calculate and print at the calculator screen. The calculator apps gives the control to the UR framework and handles events emitted from it. Most computer games also work this way. The game engine the framework for game development draws the game objects at the screen. And processes their movements and interactions. When something interesting happens in the game, such as when two objects collide, the game engine invokes an event handler to decide what to do. This is again inversion of control, program flow and event-driven programming. Hey, did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softuni.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts, and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free. Join now, softuni.org.